some rhubarb and dandelion mead. So I thought I'd do the quick video that's coming up to show just how I make it, how I get from what's called the must, which is the steeping part, up to the point when it gets to the demijohn. So you'll need a demijohn, obviously, an air trap, uh, a big funnel, which will fit into your demijohn, a sieve, some yeast, I use baker's yeast, um, it's not the fast acting, it's just the regular active dry yeast, because I have that for making bread anyway, so it saves me having two different types of yeast in, but you can use like brewer's yeast or wine making yeast, uh, a ladle, a big slotted spoon, a dessert spoon or tablespoon, and a teaspoon, I also have five pounds of honey, um, a glass for mixing and a kettle full of previously boiled water which has come down to about warm now it's not hot but it's it's not cold so now in here now I should have videoed this bef when I made the must but I forgot so in here I have about a pound of rhubarb diced up quite small if I fish a piece out you'll be able to see so quite small and two pints of compressed dandelion petals I'll try and remember to put the links below um, where I have on my blog how I do that so is there anything else um, oh yeah I've had them steeping for about a week you should steep them for about three or four days but I keep kept forgetting to transfer them basically so uh, when I put that in I poured two kettlefuls of boiling water over the dandelion petals and the chopped rhubarb and I added two crushed Campton tablets just to take care of any bugs and to stop it going mouldy whilst it's steeping because there's no alcohol to preserve it yet. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set away my yeast um, activating so I will put a level tablespoon or dessert spoon into a glass or cup, pop that in to there and to that I'm going to add a teaspoon of the honey. If I was making wine I would just take out a teaspoon of whichever sugar I was using to make the wine. It's pretty much the same for me down to wine. So, this is where I make a complete mess. Pop that in there and I'm going to add the warm water to about half it. Don't fill it to the top of the glass or you will have a mess when it starts to bubble up. So I've just half filled it and I'm just going to give it a good stir to dissolve the honey. Now just leave that to stand over there for a few minutes whilst I do everything else. First things first, I'm actually going to put my honey into my... Actually, I should talk about the demijohns. The demijohns, I tend to bottle all of my wine in a big batch, sort of towards the back end of the year. So over the space of a couple of weeks, all the demijohns of wine and mead from the previous year tend to get siphoned into bottles. And then I will wash all of the demijohns and sterilize them and then what I do is I put a really strong solution of sterilizing solution in the bottom of each of the demijohns for about an inch worth and give it a really good shake and I'll leave that in there and then I will put the air trap in the top and fill up the air trap with sterilizing solution as well and put a bit of cotton wool in the top and I'll leave those like that until I'm ready to make the next batch of wine. It keeps them sterile and it means I don't have to think about washing and sterilising and everything every time I want to make a batch of wine or a batch of mead because I might, it might be a glorious sunny day like today and I need to do this, I need to do that and I've got loads of things to do and at the same time the dandelion petals really need picking today and then I've got to do this and, and it's too I'll find I will not I'll find excuses basically to not make the wine so if everything's ready it's one of those horrid crappy jobs out the way so that's my tip for wine making so I'm going to put pour all of the honey into the demijohn through the funnel and then when the jar's empty or 
all the, the honey from the jar is in the demijohn. I'm going to put in a little bit of this warm, previously boiled water into each of the jars and give it a shake, make sure the lid's on tight mind and it'll help to dissolve and get all, out all the last of that honey that's in those jars as well and then that will also get poured in here. it on nice and tight and be careful when you do this mind you give it a shake I have had a complete mess doing this before now just leave that to stand okay I'm back I've put all of my jars of honey in and I've put water and shook all of them I also forgot to mention you could probably do with a bowl or a jug or something to put your strained petals and rhubarb into as you put them in the demijohn so as you can see my yeast in the few minutes it took me to pour that honey in is really frothed up uh, which is why you only fill it halfway with water so I'm just going to give that a quick stir so try and stop it frothing up too much before I get a chance to put it in the demi jar so now I'm going to go back to the first jar that I put the water in and just pour the rest of that water in into here and that's what the sieve is for so I move this over a wee bit I'll move these as close to each other as possible put my sieve on top of my funnel and just sieve the must into the demijohn and put the waste must in the bowl and don't fill your sieve up too far Otherwise, you might find the liquid coming out of the edge of the sieve over the top of the funnel and then you're going to have quite a mess. So I'm just going to squeeze that with the back of my ladle a little bit and empty it in the bowl. Now, if I found the level once I put everything in was only so far up, I would top up with some of the water out the kettle. But it's already quite high. You can see it's just as the demijohn's kind of curving in at the shoulder. Now, later, I will top this up and I'll top this up to sort of an inch below the neck. But if I do that now, I'm going to have it bubbling out of the airlock. The problem is, is that right at the beginning, for the first couple of weeks, it tends to be really, really active, the yeast, and it will bubble and bubble and bubble like a bottle of fizzy pop. And if you have this level too high, it'll build up froth inside this area and force its way out, up through the airlock and out the top. And I've had it all over my carpet before. So... I will leave it at that for now and then in a couple of weeks when it's calmed down I will top this up uh, probably an inch and then I will basically leave it for the next oh I don't know I'll taste it in about six months see how it's going and it will probably stay in this till next year I'm not sure 
um, it can vary but usually wines and meads take around about 12 months it can be a little bit less sometimes it can be an awful lot more I had some slow that took five years but that was an exception to the rule so it's usually a year before I fill the water trap the air trap sorry I'm going to give this a swish I've do this really carefully because it's heavy as well and just swirl it around try and get some of that honey to dissolve although truthfully I don't think it's going to so I'll leave that the honey will dissolve in the liquid you can give it a swirl every so often and just at the end just top up your airlock with previously boiled water till it's half to three quarters full and you can see that's only a little bit I don't know I'll bring that bit closer it's only a little bit full at this side but it's quite full on that side so that's fine even out it's about half full and I'll get a little bit of cotton wool and just pop that to fill that little hole up and it'll stop getting any flies and things like that in it and that's it all I've got to do is dry the demi John because it's got liquid on it and water and stick a label on it and that's it that's that's done, I don't think there's anything else to do with that other than the topping up and the bottling now if you taste this in a few months time and find it's not sweet enough or it doesn't taste honey -y enough if that makes sense um, for the type of mead you want you can add more honey last year I added another jar um, but I think I might have only put four jars in to begin with so it might have ended up with five jars in eventually anyway but that's it that's a really simple mead and this was my challenge to myself to make a mead or a wine um, from my garden with only using things that I could make in effect on the small holding so you can have bees and make your own honey um, the, dan the dandelions and the rhubarb from the garden the only thing that I would have to buy in would be the yeast and I'm sure if I really really wanted to I could figure out a way of working around that so so that's it that's how you make dandelion and rhubarb meat and it's really really nice when it's ready so thank you for watching mm -hmm.